Welcome back everyone. Thanks for checking out another video. Super special car in the shop for a tune today. This is a 2016 Ariel Atom. And uh, I've been a fan of these cars since Top Gear first showed one off when Jeremy Clarkson was driving it around uh, their track. These cars are super cool. This specific Ariel Atom is a dedicated track car. Some of them could be licensed for the street. This one isn't licensed for the street because it doesn't have any lights and stuff like that. But uh, this car, is a dedicated track car, it belongs to a friend of a friend, and uh, I'm really happy I got a chance to tune it and work on it. It is super cool. This specific Ariel Atom has the Honda engine, and uh, if some of you have seen Cletus's videos lately, he just got a Ariel Atom, and it has the, the supercharged Toyota engine. This Ariel Atom has the 9th gen Civic Si engine, so it's a K24, it's the K24 Z7 engine. It is the same engine that comes out of the 2012 to 2015 Civic Si, this engine is completely stock except for one thing, and I'll get to that in a second. It is also naturally aspirated. Uh, no turbo, no supercharger. This engine does have something unique though. It has a set of brand new four piston billet drop-in cams. A ton of people have been asking me and messaging me about these cams, and this is the first car to come by with a set of them. So I was very interested to see how they performed. They did perform well. Uh, but I'm gonna get to that in a second. These cams are drop-in cam. They don't require any uh, valve train upgrades. It does have a limiting pin installed in the VTC gear to not go over a certain amount. I think we've got it limited to just under 40 degrees uh, is what the maximum I could get out of VTC. Um, this engine is completely stock. So stock oil pump, stock uh, springs, retainers, everything else is stock except for these drop-in cams. That's what these cams are meant to be a drop-in cam to get you a bit more power on a basically completely stock engine. So like usual, I've actually already done all the tuning. I uh, had to sort out a bunch of little things like you need an O2 sensor and stuff like that, just some maintenance stuff. But uh, it's all done, it's all tuned. Uh, I did tune this on a Honda Flash Pro. So Honda Flash Pro tuning the stock Honda ECU uh, through the diagnostic port like, no like I would normally do. Tuned on our 94 octane pump gas. Uh, so why don't I cut to the dyno shots and then we'll get to the final results.
All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed those dyno poles, but I'm sure you're very interested to see what this thing put down today. So up on the screen, I have the uh, results from today and it did well, but it could do better. So, and it's not the cam's fault. I definitely think it's kind of an aerial atom quirk. The, uh, the intake on aerial atoms is not so great. It is, it's probably great on the track. It has this ram air intake, this scoop, that most likely gets some sort of ram air effect, although the windshield probably deflects a lot of the air, but basically the engine breathes through this inlet here. It has a very small filter, and I don't know if we can see it. It's hard to see, but it uses a stock intake manifold, it uses a stock throttle body, and it has this uh, silicone intake pipe here that makes a hard one 80 degree turn that is, I don't even know if it's three inches to feed from this uh, scoop. And what I was seeing in some data logs is uh, vacuum in the intake manifold was increasing as high, as we got higher up in the RPM range, which means the engine is struggling to actually uh, ingest as much air as possible. Now, that being said, the, there is a possibility the ram air effect might help on the track, although it, this is probably a low pressure zone because of the windshield. So it's hard to say if uh, that scoop would actually make much of a difference. It might um, at speed, but uh, there's no way to measure it. But anyways, onto the results. So today it put down 211 wheel horsepower, 189 foot pounds of torque. It made great power up until about 5,500 RPM. And after 5,500 RPM is when I started to see the engine struggle where the vacuum basically increased uh, which means the engine was struggling to get air and that's I think why we're not seeing like the full full potential because four piston claims about 20 ish horsepower and uh, We're about 20 horsepower off from where we should be because you can usually get 211 wheel horsepower out of a full bolt-on uh, ninth gen Civic SI um, But you don't get 189 foot-pounds torque so because the peak numbers aren't always a great indicator of how an engine performs. I'm gonna bring up some dynographs to show the, uh, the mid-range power and how these cams have actually made a bunch of mid-range power that you don't get on a K24Z7 with stock cams. All right, guys, so up on the screen, I have two results. I have in red, the results from today, from this engine with the four piston cams, and then in blue, I have a 2015 Civic Si that I tuned that was full bolt-on. Uh, when, I, when I say full bolt-on, I mean, three and a half inch cold air intake, 70 mil throttle body, uh, RBC intake manifold, RDX injectors, and full three inch exhaust. When you look at the, just the peak numbers, so in blue, technically 213 horsepower, sounds like it's made more power. But uh, if you look at the torque results, uh, especially around that 4,000 to 4,500 RPM range, there's like 30 foot pounds more torque there. And on average, 20-ish torque up until just after 5,500 RPM. And that's when the engine really starts, at least this engine here, really starts to run out of breath. And we see the blue continuing to make power, holding torque a bit flatter. Um, it doesn't really start losing power like uh, this engine did up near Redline. Unfortunately, it just seems like this engine cannot breathe as well as it needs to to make the peak numbers. All right, guys, well, that's probably about it for this video. Um, we're gonna call this round one. I do hope the owner of the Ariel Atom here is going to uh, do some upgrades, maybe an RBC intake manifold, maybe a better intake system. Uh, we'll have to see what works in the car because we are really limited due to this, uh, the bodywork from the Ariel Atom and that scoops. So, um, but yeah, hopefully there's a round two where we can see if we can get more peak power and just more power past the 5,500 RPM point. But uh, I do think the owner is really gonna enjoy all this mid-range torque by comparison. And well, I didn't get a chance to put this car on the dyno before it was all taken apart and upgraded. I wish we'd had that opportunity to dyno it before it got all its upgrades so we'd have a before and after. But uh, either way, I'm sure it's making much more mid-range power than it possibly could have made before. This thing is such a super cool car. I'm glad I got the opportunity to put it on my dyno and work with it. I do hope the owner is going to continue on and there'll be a round two and we'll see if we can try to get more power out of these, uh, this cam and this setup. But uh, 
that's about it for now, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. I, uh, if you like the video, do me a favor, hit that like button. If you haven't already, consider subscribing and I will continue to keep making these videos for you guys. So thanks again for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye now.